This is my DIY CNC build. I started it about two years ago and I it's kind of like having a train set you just keep adding on to it so it's a good thing you can do whatever you want but if you uh, buy one that's already pre-built you might be a little scared to add things to it so anyway the latest updates are I added this crest formerly crest it's an AMB spindle um, it's got uh, 0 to 10 volt digital input 5,000 to 25,000 RPMs. I added an air manifold with 3D printed uh, air for chip cleaning purposes. Um, and then I, while doing that, I, I cut that um, router mount in my CNC. And uh, it's kind of scary because I'm cutting next to uh, steel clamps and if you run into a steel clamp you can really mess stuff up. So I wanted to, I started looking at my uh, feed hold and the stop button and those are kind of hard to find so I wanted to add a external button box. So anyway, here's my button box. It's got feed hold, cycle start, servos enable, and an e-stop. The e-stop is pretty easy to figure out. It's just a normally closed switch. And when you uh, when it opens up, your board uh, senses an emergency condition and shuts all the servos down. Um, so I'll just go ahead and see the green, green light in the middle. If I hit the... If I hit the uh, e-stop, that turns red. So what I have functioning so far is if I hit this enable button here, the uh, green servos enable light comes on. That was a pretty easy thing to figure out. Um, the other two, feed hold and cycle start, are going to take a little bit of coding pro programming um, I use only um, meanwhile power supplies and um, my boards are from art at CNC 4 PC does a really good job um, that's a C62 that's my breakout board uh, Ethernet smooth stepper and then to take advantage of port 3 I installed a C80 which has, I believe, I don't know, six inputs and um, 14 outputs or something like that. So when you, uh, since I don't have these buttons hooked up, if you look in the lower left hand corner, you'll see a red light come on. And those are, this is the feed hold button. I don't know if you can see it or not. Let's see here. Feed hold, cycle start. Like I said before, I do not have those hooked up. It's going to take some coding. So I'll go ahead and turn these other buttons on. And then you can kind of see. I'll enable the servos. And then you can see the one light is on in the upper left hand corner. This is the feed hold light and the uh, cycle start light okay so what I did is I configured the pin in mock excuse me let me get a chair configured the pin in Mach 4 and then um, I gave it an output and then I just added these toggle buttons and you can add an output to a toggle button um, so then here's what they look like with all the buttons on. Um, for electronics, I got the enclosure from Menards. It's a PVC enclosure. Zero fire rating. Um, but it's all, the LEDs pull uh, 26 milliamps, I believe, or 28 milliamps each. 
at 24 volts. Um, the buttons I got from uh, Automation Direct, they're about $11 each. 50, well, sorry. The feed hold button I think was 14. This button, this in, this is just an indicator. I think that was around 15, and I think each one of these were like $17. And I think it's a CGX series, but I'm not entirely sure. Hold on, I'll, I'll get you to tell you. So here's my print. Yeah, it's a C GCX. Uh, 1213-24L, that's the yellow button. GCX 1212-24L, that's the green button. The indicator is GCX 1234-24L. And then the e-stop is GCX 1131. So I think, well, actually, if you'd like a shot of there's the print. Um, and then inside the button box, I use these uh, Phoenix connectors. Here's a part number for that, 304-5062. I got two of each, two for the LED common and two for the switch common. Actually, the LED, that's, that's a hot, which is kind of goofy, but I guess it works. So anyway... So like, the only thing I don't really go crazy over is this uh, ribbon cable. And I do have to tuck these wires up. That looks horrible. Um, but it's just me. I'll get over it. Thanks. Have a good night.